Hello friends, we are Ray and Heidi, we're your liturgists for Sunday, August 23rd. We are excited to welcome Dr. Joy Britton to fill our cyber pulpit this week, and John Nassiger will be our worship leader. Let us now begin with our call to worship. Here in this place, God welcomes all the dreamers as well as the doubters. Here, Here the, the warriors, warriors and wanderers can call on God, God by name. name. Here, in this time, we can remember all the ways God has graced us. Here, Here in, in these moments, moments we, are we are reminded that God is with us always. always. Here are gathered those daring enough to step out of comfort into the unknown. Here, Here in, in the faith, faith space, we, we will turn, turn to the God, God our, our compass, compass, for direction, direction care, and comfort as we navigate change, change together. together. Please now join us in singing the hymn of the day of all the Spirit's gifts to me. Of all the Spirit's gifts to me, I pray that I treasure most these three love joy and peace the spirit shows me loves the root of every gift sent from above of every flower of every fruit that God is love. The Spirit shows if I possess a love no my distress then this is joy though what's ahead is mystery and life itself is ours on lease each day the spirit says to me go forth in peace we go in peace but made aware that in a needy world like this our clearest purpose is to share love, joy, and peace. Thank you, John. Last, continue with our sermon series, God, Our Compass, Navigating Change Together. Each week, we will navigate through the theme and acrostic compass, aspects and expressions of God. Our series underlying text comes from the book of Proverbs 356, where it is written, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Today we will spend time with Joy as she talks about that peace that passes all understanding. Welcome, Joy. It's always interesting to understand the root of a, the ASL sign. And take the, the sign peace. There are several ways to do the word peace, depending upon the nature of how you want to use that word. There is a notion of peace, the absence of war. There's also peace as in the sense of quiet. There is peace as in calm. And then there is peace that is used for the word serenity. Interesting though, that there really is not a sign for serenity in ASL. What is used is the word become or becoming peaceful. I always like the sign the best, becoming peaceful. And it's really simple. It's just becoming peaceful. 
I'm always trying to become peaceful during chaos. As I am a mid orientation with students coming back to Mary Baldwin right now, trying to keep them safe amongst themselves and safe with me, having any sense of serenity right now, out the window, totally out the window. I do try. I try not to open up that first email staring at me first thing in the morning or allowing that voicemail to wait just a little bit longer until I get my things on my desk and settled. And usually I don't make it very far. Usually a minute before everything just goes chaotic. Yeah, I love the idea of becoming and I love the idea of that ASL sign of becoming peaceful because for me, it means that I have a chance, a slim chance, but a chance to find that serenity. Occasionally though, serenity finds me and it captures me more than I can capture serenity. It could be on the Appalachian Trail when I'm huffing and puffing, wondering if I'm gonna make it up to that next hill when suddenly this gorgeous plant with this most lovely of flower appears on the trail side. Or when I see a deer running by. Or even one time when I saw a turtle on the trail when there was no water to be seen. And I'm surrounded by that serenity when I come home hot and tired and I see the fireflies out in mass providing me with a concert of lights. I'm surrounded by that serenity when the mist gently lifts and the sun shines through. This is how I feel when I read this verse from Philippians. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Paul was speaking to his friends in Philippi while there was very little peace happening around them. They were being persecuted for their own faith. And Paul himself was in prison with the threat of execution. And yet the peace that Paul was speaking of was as the Reverend Dr. Michael Brown stated, was a peace not based on logic, but relationships, not on the environment around you, but rather the friend beside you. That peace, that sense of serenity that captures your heart and mind cannot be bought, cannot be manipulated, and I dare say, and don't shoot me for this, cannot be meditated upon until several things happen. First, we need the peace with God. Now, you may be wondering how or why I would not already have that peace with God, but I can honestly say that one time in all of our lives, we were mad at God. You may be angry with God right now, or maybe your relationship with God is not as strong as you would like it to be. Maybe you've always felt that that relationship with God that goes beyond logic was great and is great. And you may have had a friendly tiff here and there, or a difference of opinion, or just a, are you real moment? I do know, excuse me, I do not know where you are with your relationship with God, but I do know what happens to me when that peace that passes all understanding, all logic is there and when it's not there. When it's not there, there is no serenity for me. There's no quiet or calm in my life. And if you think about the definition of serenity is the state or quality of being serene, of calm and of tranquil. When my God and I are not on the same page, it affects me not only spiritually, but physically and emotionally as well. My life is out of order. Things just never seem to go right, and I don't feel right. And the funny thing is, is that I'm given clues all the time when I need to find peace with God. It could be what I'm reading, 
or hearing or just sensing. And yet I don't always listen to those clues, such as I'm too busy trying to save the world right now, or at least the 1200 students that are on this campus who seem to have concerns at all the same time that I forget about saving myself. It's hard to have that peace with God when we're in the midst of a pandemic, when we have adults, no less young adults, ignoring science, and we're struggling to keep ourselves and our families safe. It's hard to take time to continue to build that relationship with God. However you see that relationship, when you wonder what will be missing from the shelves of Walmart or the, or the grocery store this week, it's hard to have that sense of serenity capture you when there is so much hatred and discontent that is happening around us. But that is what Paul is exactly telling us that we need to do. See, Paul was in prison. His life wasn't going so well. He just finished trying to end the squabble between two women. And he knew that the followers of Jesus the followers that he brought into that church were being persecuted. And he was next on the chopping block, literally the chopping block. And yet Paul had peace. He had peace in his heart. He had peace in his mind. And he was okay with whatever was going to happen. When I was a chaplain, I used to see that sense of peace in the hospital. I would go into some rooms and I would see them struggling, whether they were gonna have surgery the next day or whether they knew that they weren't meant to be on, in this world for very long. And they would struggle. Their bodies were racked with that sense of pain and struggle and their eyes were blank. And yet I would go into other patient rooms and even though they were going to have a major surgery or they knew they were going to be here much longer, their body was calm. Their light, their, excuse me, their eyes shone and their light was so indescribable. And they knew that they were going to be okay. God gives us that peace, a peace that we can't physically hold on to, but rather that we can embody our whole self not understanding, but recognizing that feeling, that sense, that moment of serenity, if we allow God into that quiet place. In 1980, uh, a musician, American composer and musician, Ralph Carmichael, and some of you may have recognized that name, wrote a song called The Quiet Place. And I wanna share with you the lyrics. It brings to the heart of the matter the where Paul was in that place, that he wants us to be and have that peace with God. And I do need to warn you that this song was written years ago, so it's definitely not gender neutral. There is a quiet place, far from the rapid pace, where God can soothe my troubled mind. Sheltered by tree and flower, there in my quiet hour, with him my cares are left behind. Whether a garden small or a mountain tall, new strength and courage there I find. Then from this quiet place, I go prepared to face a new day with love for all mankind. There is a quiet place far from the rapid pace where God can soothe my troubled mind, sheltered by tree and flower there in my quiet place. Okay, so we got the groove on between God and ourselves. We are best buds and everything is right with us. So what happens next? Well, next we must look at ourselves. We must have peace with ourselves. And so you're wondering, mm, Joy, would not everything be okay with ourselves if we're good with God? That's a huge billboard sounding no. You see, God has given us the peace. We're, we're doing nothing but being a vessel to accept that peace. What we need to do, excuse me, what we do with it once we accept it 
is something else. So let's look at the text again. It states that the peace of God will guard your hearts and mind. Wow, the peace will guard ourselves? But that will not happen if we do not allow it to happen. I want to remind everybody of a little thing that God did, and that was to give us free will. God gives us that undeniable peace, but it's up to us to accept that peace. It is up to us to pull that peace into our hearts and into our minds, and it is up to us to guard that peace. Even in the troubling times that we have, we have this incredible opportunity to settle our minds so that our souls can accept it and our hearts can accept that peace of God. Even in these troubling times, we can portray that peace for someone else so that they can grab on to the calm that we're feeling. I'm sure we all know of people, or at least one person in our life, where we suddenly calm down when we're around them. No matter how chaotic their lives are or how chaotic our lives are. And we all we do is we get around them and we go, ah. I have a dear friend from the church in Monterey that just exudes peace. Her life is not great. She has suffered much loss, but, and it's just not me, but everyone who meets her finds her calming presence like a breath of cool, fresh air. We need to be that cool air for not only ourselves, but so that we can be it for others as well. A story to tell. There once lived a king who announced a prize to the artist who would paint the best painting depicting peace. Many great painters came from around the, the kingdoms and sent the king several of their best art pieces. One of the pictures among the various masterpieces was of a calm lake, perfectly marrying peaceful, towering, snow-capped mountains. Overhead was a blue sky with fluffy clouds. The picture was perfect. Most of the people who viewed the picture of this picture of peace from various artists thought that that particular picture was the best amongst all. But when the king announced the winner, everyone was shocked. The picture which won the prize had a mountain, but it was ragged and bare. The sky looked very angry. There was lightning. This did not look peaceful at all, and it looked like the artist had mistakenly submitted his painting depicting storm rather than peace. But if anyone looked closely at the painting, they could see a tiny little bush growing in the cracks in the rock. And in that bush, a mother bird had built her nest. Amid the rush of angry weather, the bird sat on her nest with peace. The peace doesn't mean to be in a place where there's no noise or trouble. Peace means to be in the midst of all the chaos and still be calm in your heart. The real peace is a state of mind not the state of the surroundings. And all we need to do is to think back to what Christ taught us. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, they neither sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly God feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? And of which of you being anxious can add a single hour to this span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, 
which is today alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly God knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow. For tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Just as the mother bird was calm in the nest, we too can feel the calm in ourselves because God gave us the peace in the first place. It's peace for humanity. And I and Colleen and probably every minister in the world can probably do several ser sermons on this concept. Peace for humanity is so needed in today's world. And yet, interesting enough, peace for humanity was needed in the times of Paul. And you go back even just a few years before that, and it was needed in the times of Jesus. There has not been one era, one year, where humanity in its totality did not need peace. And forget about serenity. Humanity is way far away from accepting serenity right now. It just needs peace as in the absence of war. I believe that Jesus was sent to this world, and this is just my opinion only, but he was sent in this world to not only forgive our sins, but to also provide a template for peace. He was sent to give us an understanding that our peace from God is not only to help ourselves, but to help our brothers and sisters around us. Jesus sat with multitudes of people, the believers and unbelievers, ate bread with saints and sinners alike, and forgave those who asked for forgiveness and those who did not even know they needed to ask for forgiveness in the first place. Yet, Jesus was not a wallflower, but a stone turner. He did not allow the status quo to just happen. We, we need to be stone turners. We get stuck in our own sense of comfortableness that we never want to venture out past our comfort or safety. But our comfort or safety is not the same as having peace or allowing humanity to have peace. Holly Heron, the professor emerita of New Testament at Christian Theological Seminary states it this way, the peace that Paul speaks of is a gift because it is produced by God. Yet it is not a gift to be received passively, to be set on a shelf and admired, nor is it an act of divine intervention that suddenly makes all things right. It is a peace that pushes the limits of our imaginations challenging us to constantly reconsider what it is that makes for peace, for whom and how. Because God's imagination is larger than ours. It is also a peace that guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. To guard is to protect. There is no shortage of evidence that our hearts and our minds two powerful forces that drive our imaginations and shape our attitudes and behaviors need protecting, not only from the influence of outside forces, but sometimes from ourselves. I believe that Paul understood this to be his core, which is why he added, I think, the last part of the sentence, God's peace that is found in your hearts and minds will be guarded by you through Christ Jesus. Paul knew that the church in Philippi, his friends, by the way, needed a compass to guide them through those horrible times they were facing. He needed to remind the people that Christ is the anchor 
that's not going to let you stray if you let that anchor out. It is the same in Matthew's passage. Matthew's passage, it's stating, do not worry. But it doesn't say, you're not doing this alone. It states you're doing this through seeking the kingdom of God. And what and who is the kingdom of God? Well, of course, humanity. By seeking Christ through humanity, not just Park Street Christian Church's humanity, all the disciples of Christ's humanity, but humanity in total, you will find peace even in the chaos. You too will be sent, excuse me, you too will be able to survive the storms of chaos, pandemics, and racism. Whatever strife is out there. Strife may go away for a bit. There may be this settling down of things, but then you know it comes roaring up back in another form. But our peace that God has gifted us never leaves. It can provide us with a compass to steer us through rough waves and hailing storms to connect and reconnect us to the one who saved us. Another story, a wandering monk, monk passed by the courtyard of a monastery where he heard two groups of monks arguing about the temple flag fluttering in the breeze. It is the flag that moves, one group argued. No, it is the wind that moves, argued the other group. And back and forth they argued, responding to the logic of the other side, coming up with new rationale for their respective positions. But it just came down to, it's the wind that moves, it's the flag that moves. After listening for a while, the itinerant monk interrupted them and said, if you look more closely, you will see that it is neither the flag nor the wind that moves. What moves is your mind. We need that mind movement to occur between two people and then two more and then two more until it's a movement of the mind in the direction of love and respect for all humanity. It can be done. We've seen it in peace talks between Israel and Palestine. We've seen it when Jesus and the centurion come together. And look at Paul, lest we forget that he was a persecutor of Jesus' followers until his eyes were opened. The first step is not with the other person, but with yourself. Then it is learning about what makes the other person tick. What are their likes and dislikes? What are the buttons that you shouldn't push? And most important, it's just about listening. We need to listen to the stories of our brothers and sisters in Christ and beyond Christ. How are we to understand someone else if we keep ourselves secluded, surrounded by those safety zones? The song, Let There Be Peace on Earth states, and let it begin with me. And the song does not state in perfect melody, but in perfect harmony. I remember a true story that occurred during World War I in 1914, and some of you may, may know about this story. The British and the Germans were behind their own enemy lines, or their own lines, I should say, in the trenches. And on Christmas Eve, the British suddenly heard the song, Silent Night, being sung in German. They joined in in English, and the evening was filled with Christmas carols. When morning light came the next morning, some German soldiers came out of the trenches and started walking toward the Allied lines through what they call a no man's land, yelling out, Merry Christmas, but they did it in English. The British soldiers were fearful that it may be some type of uh, trick or attack, but then they saw the soldiers were not armed. And so they too laid down their guns and climbed out of the trenches to meet the enemy, except that to hey, they were not enemies but human beings celebrating a special day. As they met in the middle, they began to shake hands and introduce themselves to one another. They spent that Christmas day, to day in peace. They played a game of soccer together and they even exchanged gifts with one another, things like cigarettes and plum pudding. 
They sang more carols together until the night fell, and then they went, both went back to their own trenches. And although the next day they went on as soldiers and as enemies, they did have this one day to celebrate. You see, serenity, that peace of God, took hold of them, and they imagined a day of peace. It occurred because God's imagination is so much bigger than ours. And God already knows that we can be one humanity in all of its wonderful and colorful diversity of life. God is just waiting for us to share in that vision and to come home to the peace of God freely given. Amen. Please join me now for the prayers of the people followed by the Lord's Prayer. Lord, we pray for peace for those who weep in silence, peace for those who cannot speak, peace when all hope seems to disappear. O oh God, God, replenish, replenish your, your peace in the, the midst, midst of all, all your, your people. people. In the midst of rage, of violence and disappointment, in the midst of pandemics and social inequities and destruction of the earth, Lord, show us your light in the darkness. O oh God, God, replenish your, your peace in the, in the midst, midst of, of all, all your people. people. Lord, we pray for peace for those who raise their voices to demand it. Peace when there are many who do not wish to hear of it. Peace as we find the way to justice. O oh God, God, replenish, replenish your, your peace in the midst of all your people. people. And Lord, we especially pray for healing peace to fall upon all those whose names we lift in this moment of silence. It is with peaceful hearts we now join together and pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we come to a time in worship where we mindfully pause and gather in spirit together around the welcome table. You may wish to pause this recording to prepare the elements at this time. Come to the one who welcomes each and every one of us to this table of grace. We bring our broken hearts so they might be made whole. Join in spirits with your sisters and brothers, remembering the one who gifts us with loving wisdom. The, the bread, bread of life, life for all who hunger. hunger. The, the cup, cup of, of compassion, compassion for a broken, broken world. world. There is a spirit moving across the water. There is a spirit rolling across this town. There is a voice above the madness. There is a spirit moving now. Someday we'll run. Believe it, there is 
the spirit moving now. The walls are thick and the walls are sturdy, but walls still fall at a trumpet sound. Hand in hand we'll walk together. There a spirit moving now. Someday we'll run and we will not stumble. Someday we'll fly. We won't look down. And all we'll see and most believe it. There is a spirit moving now. There is a spirit moving now. There is a spirit moving now. Thank you to John and Joy for their worship leadership and reflection. Now please join us in our benediction. May God's love surround you. God's spirit guide you. God's whisper cheer you. God's peace calm you. God's shield protect you. God's wisdom arm you. Whenever God may lead you. Amen. It has been a joy to serve as your liturgist, and we are so glad that you joined us. We are also grateful for the ways friends like you support the ministries of Park Street, either by online giving or through standard mail.